And they're in a pretty good spot. Two and a half game, uh, games better than the Pittsburgh Pirates. Cardinals playing really good baseball here in September, 14 and 6, but they're having a hard time running away from the Pirates, who have won 13 of their last 16 ball games, just two back in the loss column. Should be a fun week to watch those two clubs. And the Cardinals' magic number is five in the division. The Cubs have been very competitive against them. Look at that, J.D. The Cubs have out homer the Cardinals 24 to 9. Yeah, and that really speaks to the nature of these two clubs. The Cubs very home run dependent. Not the case with the Cardinals. They're much more of a high average line a line drive team and they're been much better in the season series with the Cubs with runners in scoring position. Been a tough year for Travis Wood who was an all-star last year. He will not get to 200 innings this season. Final start of the year and was pretty good his last time out. Yeah indeed he was. It was a nice bounce back outing for him. Two starts ago he really scuffled. Six shutout last time against the Reds. This season against St. Louis four starts. He's 2-0. Oh. The club is 3-1 and one in those four starts with an ERA just a little bit below four. On Friday, Clayton Kershaw got win number 20. Adam Wainwright is trying to join him tonight. Yeah, and he's been really pitching well. Shut out last time out against Milwaukee. He's 4-0 with a 169 ERA here in the month of September. Well, the last time the Cardinals saw the Cubs, Jorge Soler had a big two-homer performance to announce his arrival here in the big leagues. He's in the lineup tonight for game one. Next. By Budweiser. Designate a driver and enjoy the great times. Ford, manufacturers of America's best selling brand. Check out our best selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Uh, tonight's game is available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting provided by WRTO La Tremenda. Chicago's Spanish language sports leader. And Cubs baseball in beautiful high definition on WGN is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Now the St. Louis Cardinal lineup written out by manager Mike Matheny. Happy 44th birthday to Matheny. Matt Carpenter back in the lineup. They've got some sort of a stomach illness flu bug thing going around the clubhouse. He missed two games. He's back tonight. Randall Gritchick is in right. Matt Holiday in left. Johnny Peralta is the shortstop. Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Matt Adams also missed two games due to illness. John Jay in center field. Very good numbers all around. He always seems to hit for average. Pete Cosma gets to start at second and the pitcher Adam Wainwright bats ninth. 
Defense for the Cubs this evening. Coglin Kalish, Soler, left center, right. Around the horn will go Valbuena, Baez, Alcantara, and Rizzo. Wellington Castillo behind the plate. And Travis Wood on the mound. 31st start for Travis. 8 up, 12 down, 486 earned run average. Let's get the umpires for you tonight. Paul Emmel. He's the crew chief. James Hoy at first. Joliet's Mark Carlson at second. Bill Welke over at third. Wind not doing a whole lot. Cool temps as we get started. Cardinals and Cubs resuming their long standing rivalry, which dates back to 1892. Lefty to lefty to get us started and a strike. I think. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Didn't see a bunch of a call from Emil. 0 and 1 on Carpenter. Assistant hitting coach David Bell, I guess, uh, went back to the team hotel. Marco Gonzalez did not make the trip. I was not in their clubhouse, but I, I guess over the weekend there were signs that said, wash your hands everywhere in the Cardinal clubhouse. This is the wrong time for. Everybody to get sick. 59 degrees and again, not much wind. So if you're going to go over to the Cardinal Clubhouse, you're going to throw on a, a hazmat suit, or at least a mask. Carpenter knows how to work the count. Yeah, very patient hitter, typically sees a lot of pitches. He's got a little something in the eye. Maybe a contact issue. Ironically, because he's a pretty good contact guy. He has hit 321 against Wood in his career. No batting gloves as he gets ready to hit, and he missed it for strike three. So much for contact. Good start for Wood, who went six scoreless last time out. He got a no decision against the Cincinnati Reds. Cut fastball gets the swing and miss from Carpenter. Use this change up a good bit in that start against Cincinnati. Still relies heavily on the cut fastball. That's his go to offering. Carpenters usually use wood, but could we say wood abused Carpenter that time? Mm, yes. Randall Gritchick playing right. Backdoor breaking ball in for a strike. Big series for Gritchick against the Reds over the weekend. Four for ten, two doubles, two home runs. Matt Holiday on deck. Inside almost hit him. Cardinals ranked 10th in the National League in runs. As JD mentioned, they, they hit for average, fifth. In batting average, second to last in home runs. Fly ball to center field. That's Ryan Kalish out there tonight. And two down for Holiday. That yeah, Cardinals are an interesting team. You know, they're first place club and they're having a nice year, but. They don't really stand out in any one area. No, they don't. Kind of middle of the league in most statistical categories. Eighth best ERA in, in the National League. Holiday with a first inning homer off Kyle Hendricks on July 27th here at Wrigley. The only run in a Cardinal 1 0 win. Then moved to late August in St. Louis. He had. Game winning RBIs in the final two games of that set. Three homers, nine knocked in in those two contests. Chris, well placed heater from Wood. Holiday in his career, 351 hitter against Travis Wood, and he's seen a lot of them. 13 out of 37 with four long balls. So. Member of the band Missing Persons here at the ballpark. One and two. And 
That's what I'm talking about. This is Wolfpack. Wolfpack of one. Rizzo zone foul territory and Travis Wood very sharp here in the first inning. Oh. Cups coming up when we come back. By Mazda in the 2014 Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Chris Coglin, big weekend against the Dodgers. Javier Baez, the shortstop, hits second. Anthony Rizzo should be good to go the rest of the way, assuming the back holds up. Soler back in the lineup tonight. Luis Valbuena, good numbers versus the Cardinals. Castillo homered yesterday. Alcantara homered Saturday. It's Kalish in center and the pitcher Wood. Who's where for the Cardinals tonight? Holiday Jay Gritchick in the outfield. Carpenter, Peralta, Cosma, Adams third to first. And Molina behind the plate and big Adam Wainwright on the mound. Line for his second 20 win campaign. Last time he won 20 was 2010 and he got that milestone victory against the Cubs as well. Uh, he's a, a workhorse. A true ace that he's been at his best here in September when they've needed him the most. 19 and 9, 245. He's only allowed 10 home runs in 220 innings of work. Swung on and missed. He's doing it with a fastball that, in terms of velocity, is probably a, a click below major league average. He has tremendous command. He, good cutter, outstanding curveball. Excellent fielder. Unlike a lot of guys these days, he's in a good fielding position after he lets go of the ball. Yeah, very uh, sound mechanically. He beats his delivery and generally does a lot of work down around the knees and below. Did you say pizza delivery? Pizza de Oh, my. Oh, repeats. Repeats. Delivery. Delivery. Wainwright won number 20 in 2010, September 24th that year here at Wrigley Field. Bounce to the shortstop, Johnny Peralta, who makes the play, one down. The Cardinals as a staff have 21 shutouts. That's the most in team history since 1968, when in the year of the pitcher, they dealt 30. Wainwright coming off. Complete game shutout win. Gibson probably had half of those in 68. Yeah. What a 112 ERA yeah. that year. 1 0 on Javier Baez did a little digging today. So he has struck out in 16 straight games. We know he's swinging and missing a lot. 1 1. But his walk rate. 
is increasing. That's good to see over his last 34 games. 9.3% after not walking in his first 12 games over 53 plate appearances. So the strikeout rate right now JD is basically double the major league average 41% mm -hmm. but his walk rate is is in good shape and hopefully that will go up a little bit while the strikeout rate goes hopefully down. Yeah and, and, and as, a fair the, amount. as the walk rate goes up you know the, the idea being that he'll see more pitches to hit right now he's just pulling off so many pitches. That was a bad one and he went after it in the dirt for strike three. You know the better guys. For sure, have been able to exploit his aggressiveness. Certainly would put Wainwright in that category of one of the better guys. Strike on Rizzo. Gibson had 13 shutouts right. in uh, 1968. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I want to give Ryan Davis some credit. Uh, Ryan sent out a tweet about that uh, walk rate, so got me thinking a little bit about Javier and those. Uh, non contact plate appearances. He's had a lot of them, hasn't he? We hope more will be walks than strikeouts down the road. That one just poked the other way by Rizzo and it kicks off the sidewall. He's on his way to second. He's got to hurry. He is safe. It's a two out double. If ever there's a time to push it, it's with two outs to get into scoring position. So, you know, Rizzo, he's shown this approach all year long with two strikes, a little quieter with the lower body, willing to sacrifice power to put the ball in play. So that becomes a question for Baez too. Are you willing to make that adjustment and or should he make that adjustment? There's plenty of people around the game that say guys that are capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark shouldn't really make that adjustment. Go ahead and swing big all the time. But we've seen it pay off in terms of average for Rizzo this year. Solaire takes a cutter off the outside corner for ball one. 18 games in, 15 times, or 15 of those games, I should say, he has at least one hit. He's knocked in a run in 12 of the 18. He's got an extra base hit in half. That one might get down. Long run. Gritchick's going to get there. Just held up for the right fielder. Nothing, nothing after an inning.
Brian Sandberg paying tribute to the fans around Wrigley Field, taking a lap around the field. And in his speech, he thanked the one consistent through his 15 years, and that's been the fans right here at Wrigley Field day in and day out. September 21st, 1997, Ryan Sandberg's last game at Wrigley Field. Southwest Airlines, without a heart, it's just a machine. Travis Wood back to work. Johnny Peralta. First year with the Cardinals in a club record 21 home runs. For a shortstop in a single season. In the dirt. One got away from Travis. A tough year for Rhino with the uh, Phillies. First full season as their manager right now 71. And 85. Last place in the National League East. That's high. It's 3 and 0. The Braves collapse. Costing Frank Wren his job as Atlanta's general manager John Hart on an interim basis. Takes over. Doesn't sound like he's. In the mix though and doesn't want to be in the mix to be the permanent GM and John Sherholtz are good friends. Sandy Alderson reportedly ready to get an extension as the Mets general manager. So over and it's out of play. Let's get a cup selfie from you. Hashtag WGN Cubs. And we say selfies. No, like that's not a selfie, right? That's somebody else taking the picture. But, um, and I say that because John Oliver on his uh, show the other night did a bit on TV, people calling pictures selfies when they're really not. So we just wanted to acknowledge that, that there is a the difference. stark difference between a selfie and a non-selfie, right. and you're not going to fool us. Three and two on Peralta. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. All the way back to get him. I'm behind three and oh. Now this would be a selfie, right? Mm-hmm. You could take and there's a camera behind you, so you could do a picture of yourself. I think I did. There it is. Can't really see it. I'll send it to our producer, Mark Brady. He'll get it on the air. Boy, that was a bad picture. Mainly because I'm in it and I took it. But it is a selfie. Molina fouls. Uh oh. Oh, come on, fellas. It's not that cold. Already heating up in the bullpen. In second. Maybe they're just going to make some toast. Wow. Maybe it's colder down there than it is up here. I don't even have a ski hat on tonight. It's usually. I can tell if it's really cold here at the ballpark. So Lairs got it. Two outs. Cup fans, make sure you check out Lennon JD's baseball blog at WGNTV.com. The blog is sponsored by Jeff Bukovic, your nationwide insurance agent. Serving the area for 36 years to join the nation, contact Jeff at JeffBook.com. Nationwide is on your side. A special thanks to our WGN home crew. And game notes on the tonight's contest and much more. Here's Matt Adams fouling. So he and Carpenter missed Saturday and Sunday due to that 
bug going around the Cardinal team. Oh and two. This is the Travis Wood we saw last year and the guy we saw in his last start against the Reds. Out of play. John Jay on deck. Laid off that pitch to even it up two and two. Jake Arrieta gets his final start of the year on Wednesday night. Kyle Hendricks will go tomorrow and then we'll likely see him on Sunday in Milwaukee. What a year for Arietta. We'll try to get his 10th win on Wednesday against John Lackey. Strike three call. Six up, six down for Travis Wood through two. By Xfinity. Great to see one of the Cubs' top prospects. Shortstop Addison Russell finished the year with the Cubs at Double A Tennessee after being acquired from the Oakland A's. Thinking in some batting practice. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Three seasons, still only 20. Career 300 hitter and has slugged 522 in the minors. Yeah, he, the, uh, and defensively, the reports are. Outstanding, great hands, big, strong kid. Draws comparisons to Barry Larkin. Luis Valbuena, little equipment issue there. One ball, no strikes. He's got the perfect name for Wrigley Field, doesn't he? Addison. 
We look forward to seeing him in uniform here at some point yeah. not too far down the road. Yeah. And get a picture of him and the, and the bear. The Cub Clark the Cub there you have Clark and Addison's right. Three and oh about Buena. Or, or maybe 20 against Wainwright. We could get Clark uh, Griswold out here. Clark and Addison that way. I think he still lives around here. How about Gary Sheffield? Mm hmm. Joe Waveland. <laughs> the lesser known Joe Waveland. Wainwright with his 3 1, and Valbuena missed it 3 and 2. Wainwright and Wood both work quickly with a purpose. They won't stray very far from that slab and make their pitch, get the ball back, and right back to work. The invisible 91 looked like it was pretty much down the middle, but Valbuena couldn't get it. Don't miss your chance to meet your favorite Cub players and alumni at the 2015 Cubs convention. It will take place at the Sheridan Chicago Hotel and Towers January 16th through the 18th. Hotel packages are on sale and uh, they come along with the uh, individual passes to purchase to book your stay or purchase passes. Visit CubsConvention.com. Wellington Castile return from uh, a bruised rib yesterday and he homered his 12th of the year. That's a career high. His previous high was eight. Set last year. Yeah, fits and starts for Castillo this year offensively. Had some really tough stretches. Then he'd start to heat up and he thought, well, maybe it's all going to come together for him. And overall, I think it's been a bit of a down year for him. Yeah, and it you know, I think there's an asterisk there offensively for Welly because I, I do think there was a huge emphasis he has put on his work behind the plate. And not everybody can be Yadier Molina. <laughs> do all that great work back of the plate and then go out and hit, you know, 280. A jam shot bouncer to the second baseman, Cosma, and he gets Castile. And I think that's one position JD where you feel like you're you're in good shape with Castillo if it's a position you can upgrade. That's one of the few spots around the diamond where you don't have a prospect you know knocking at the door. Now Kyle Schwarber still wants to be a catcher but he's probably not going to be in the big leagues catching you know at the start of next year that kind of thing. Right right yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Well, and it, you know, catching is always a defense first position. You know, for me anyway, you, you, you value the guys back there who can handle the pitching staff and, and do all the, you know, shut down the running game. And he's been much better in that regard in the second half of the season. I mean, if the Cubs had a top five offense, you look at Welly's year offensively and you go, great, whatever, whatever he gives you. Right, five. and with what's on the way if all these yep. kids come up and turn out to be the players we hope they'll be then you don't really have a problem with Wellington Wellington not developing you know beyond what he is offensively. I just think I, I think there's more there offensively. I yeah I would agree and I think he would agree with that. In the dirt on the curveball to Alcantara. From Georgia, Brunswick, Georgia, recently turned to 33 6 7, 235. And ouch, Alcantara's backswing caught Molina on the helmet, but he's okay. Scoreless after two. There's that selfie.
fans, if you'd like to manage the game along with that gentleman there, uh, Rick Renteria, log on to WGNTV.com. Do it right now and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner there. You'll connect to all the up-to-the-minute stats and information while you watch from home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape. They have pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Scoreless as we get into the third. John Jay pretty consistent this year with his batting average has not hit lower than 266 in any month and he hit 382 in August. And he's batting 370 against left handed pitching. Drives this ball out in the deep center. Kalis going after it. He makes a running grab on the warning track. What a play. Kalis gets a start in center field. You see the break after the swing by Jay. Good route. Great concentration. Looks easy, but when you've got the, those bricks looming, <laughs> some guys tend to short arm it a little bit. Pete Cosma playing second. Fifth start all coming this month. Hey, we want to give a shout out to Ethel Aarons, native of Chicago. She's been a Cup fan her whole life. 102 years old. Lives at the Rosewood Nursing Home. They've been taught in Oak Park and Mount Prospect for many years. Watching us tonight. Wow, happy birthday. Yeah. What an achievement. I don't know if it's her birthday. I think she's just 102. Oh, I thought it was a birthday. No. Saying. Just saying hi. Yeah, every day's your birthday. Yeah. Right. One and two to Cosma. Here it is. Out behind the Cardinal bullpen. Their magic number in the central is five. So just doing the quick math, if the Cubs can beat them two out of three, there's no way they can. Clinch in this series. Pirates are in Atlanta. Scoreless in the fifth tonight. Liriano for Pittsburgh tonight. Harang for the Braves. Liriano's been great lately for the Pirates. Oh, they got 045 ERA in September. Delivers that ball line to left for the Cardinals first hit. Cosma has a double. What's been good about keeping that uh, cutter down so far tonight that one was. Up right over the heart of the plate for Cosma. You can't go to sleep on Adam Wainwright. He's a pretty good hitter. One eighty eight this year two oh three for his career and a pretty good rip at that pitch. Wainwright started the All-Star game for the National League. Got into some hot water with some by admitting, at least for a few innings, that he had grooved a couple of fastballs to Derek Jeter. His first at bat and it resulted in a double. Some took the uh, term pipe shots to mean that you know, it kind of gave him some BP pitches and then he later went, no, 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 I'm just challenging him. 
Kind of had to backtrack a little bit. Yeah, people were getting pretty worked up about that. Um, Gave up three runs in that uh, yeah. first inning. We both stated for the record we didn't have a problem with any of it. Strike three call. That pitch actually looked inside, but Travis Wood will gladly take it. Yeah, that's a pitch you rarely get called. Finishes off the inside corner, ran across the plate. Paul Hummel appears to be in the mood to call some strikes here tonight. Well, it's weird. This whole thing about the you know the All Star Game mattering as to uh, who hosts the World Series. You can understand people going, "Wait a minute, that could create a little bit of a, a disadvantage for the for the National League if you're pumping fastballs over the heart of the plate to Jeter." For the same token, it's Jeter. It's the end of his career. You want to challenge him? I think most players in that game still treat it as an exhibition. Yes. That's where the disconnect is. And the irony is years ago when it didn't count when it didn't count there was a <laughs> there was a period of time where the, 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 the players really cared about who won a loss and then that slowly kind of disappeared. Totally agree. Two and all to Carpenter and I, I don't know I don't know that you can really ever get that back. Cosma the runner at second Wood checking on him now the pitch it's in there and it's two and one. Happy 35th birthday big cup fan in Mayville New York Matt Simcoe watching tonight. Wood back in it at two and two. Very calm conditions. Temps in the upper 50s tonight. Very comfortable here at Wrigley. Clear skies. Carpenter strikeout victim last time, but he's below average in terms of strikeout rate. He walks almost as much as he strikes out. Very patient hitter. Typically, he's looking to go the other way, especially when he's down in the count. He's a line drive hitter. Got a gap to gap. Up to play him. Step the other way in the outfield. Pretty much straight up on the infield. Swing and a miss. He got him. That'll end the inning. Five K's for Wood in the first 10 batters.
We are scoreless. Wrigleyville Rooftops has premier seating for up to 200 for corporate gatherings, family reunions, and bachelor or bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games. For more details, you go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Bottom of the third. And a scoreless tie. Kalish, Wood, Coglin. This team with a hit, a double. Rizzo for the Cubs. Cosma for the Cardinals and a strike on Ryan Kalish. Wainwright way over to the left, the first base side of the pitching rubber. Fastball at 88. It was wide. Kalish made the opening day roster, appeared at 39 games, optioned to AAA Iowa on uh, May 26th, spent the rest of the season there, and then came back here on September 3rd. Pitch outside. Nice to see Travis Wood do some more damage with the bat. Solidify his silver slugger credentials. Only three home runs on the year for Travis. Now the silver slugger is strictly a statistical award, is it not? No, I think it's a they vote on it. Yeah. I think that is a uh, Coaches and Managers Award, the, the Gold Glove, which does have a statistical component. Yeah, they've got a an analytical component to the Gold Glove now, right? Don't they? Uh, yeah, Saber, or something like that. A, yeah, some advanced stats that that basically account for a quarter of the vote. Three two on the way and we'll do it again. You got him looking. Big Ten Rivalry Week continues this week. Support your Big Ten school and get a special Cubs t-shirt featuring your school colors. Tomorrow night, Nebraska and Iowa will duel it out. The Big Ten Rivalry promotion only available through Cubs.com slash special events. Be part of the Big Ten fun. Here is Travis Wood. Well, he's got a hitter's count. Travis with a 737 OPS as a pitcher that leads all major league pitchers at the plate. Madison Bumgarner right behind him. Gritchick in right, and let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Beautiful Wrigley Field final home series of 2014, the 100th anniversary season in this iconic ballpark, and the Cardinals and Cubs. 
Games 17 through 19 of a season series that is currently led by St. Louis 9 7. Cubs have out homered him 24 to 9. So the Cubs finish their home portion of the schedule here with the Cardinals, and then they'll open next season here with the Cardinals. Curve strike to Coglin. That is Monday, April 6th, 2015. Broken bat bouncer hugging the line foul. What do you think, uh, Wainwright Arietta scheduled the pitch that day? Yeah, or to be determined? Moment. Who knows? I don't know if Ricky's been asked just yet. No probables listed yet for 2015. So apparently Major League Baseball has formed or is forming another committee to study a pace of play issues with Major League Baseball. Perhaps will be some rule changes coming. Next year. It would not influence either one of the starting pitchers here. You wouldn't have to put a clock on Wainwright or Wood. Found the way. Good friend Bruce Miles, and I assume he's going to write something about it. Uh, from the Daily Herald, he, would, he was showing me the game times of uh, Kyle Hendricks' starts, too. And I mean, it's a lot of 231s, 237, 240. Which was the norm back in the early 1980s. Yeah. Two and a half hour game was the norm. Now we're up around three. Three hours average time of game. And again, it's not necessarily the, the length of game, but it's the pace. It's, it's the really long, low run games. It has you kind of scratching your heads. It's one thing if guys are banging the ball over the ballpark and it's a nine to seven game and there's a lot of action, that's going to take a little longer to play. But the low scoring games, they're taking three hours plus and not a whole lot going on. You get a little tedious. Bounce past Wainwright, but right Cosma, who makes the play. Nothing, nothing. Three in the books.
schedule. I want to ask our producer, Mark Brady, to do that little mechanic again. Yeah, right there. Good. Yeah. Good <laughs> to come back. For, go further than any one of Ford's many fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at local Ford store, stores.com. He's the maestro down there. <laughs> and he wants to be called maestro. Nothing but maestro. <laughs> Seinfeld character. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Mark Metcalf. Swing and a miss by Gritchick. It's 0 2. A little let up there from Travis Wood. As I mentioned, he used that pitch effectively and, and more often than normal last time out against Cincinnati. Bryant, Arkansas native deals, and Gritchick stays alive. To finish strong on what has been a disappointing season and on a nice little roll here tonight. And rifled into left center as Gritchick is on. He tried the change up again and that one just stayed up a little bit on him. Here's Holiday. Three fifty one against Travis Wood for Matt Holiday. Wood got him in the first inning on a foul out. Ball one. Cardinals jumped into first place at the beginning of this month and they have not let go. 14 and 6 in September. Bounced into right. Trouble now for Wood. Middle of the order coming up. Two on, nobody out. I get into the holiday. Well, there you go. There's timing for you. Spirit a little early in Sport Cubs charities by being part of our holiday tradition. Purchase your limited edition. Chicago Cubs Christopher Radko glass ornament ornaments are sixty dollars and all proceeds will benefit Cubs charities visit Cubs.com slash ornament for more information. There you go. Good timing. Here's Peralta. So six games into the season the Cardinals three and three and in third place they moved up to second six days later spent most of the year trailing Milwaukee. Caught the Brewers on August 31st, passed them the next day, September 1st. And they may be just a few days away from clinching the division. A lot of people thought the Cardinals were the team to beat when the season started. Mike Matheny, third year as their manager. They've been a playoff team all three years. If they get there next year, JD, he will be the first manager in Major League history. To lead his team to the playoffs in his first four seasons yeah. as a skipper. Pick of a run. And he's only 44. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, today's his birthday. Now, obviously, easier in this era of baseball to go to the postseason. Yep. But still, a very nice achievement for Matheny. 2 and 0 now on the dangerous Johnny Peralta. Pitch away from contact there, trying to get Peralta to chase down and away. He would not. So Cardinals getting their second look here at Travis Wood. Finding some success. He's going to have to make a couple big pitches here. Peralta get back into this one. Barehanded pick by Chad Noble. And he didn't even lose his coffee. That was very stylish by the young man, Chad Noble, Cubs bullpen catcher. 
spent time as a player in the Cubs organization, had a heck of a career at Northwestern. The 3 1 out of the left center. Knuckling, it gets past a diving Coughlin. Britchick will come around to score. Holiday will be held at third. It's a double for Johnny Peralta, and it's 1 0 St. Louis. Looked like that ball was going to hang up there long enough for Coughlin to make a play on it. It was hit off the end of the bat. Reaches out and lifts it towards left center field. And I thought Chris was going to be able to run it down. Could not. Richard scores. Holiday, after waiting, takes off, makes third. Second and third. Here's Molina. Comes to bring their infielders halfway in. Rizzo all the way in toward. At the end, edge of the grass, but way off the line. And Molina gets a piece of it He'll, for strike one. He typically will really take a, a right, right center field approach in situations like this. Remember, Molina missed 40 games because of a right thumb injury early July through late August. For this final month. It's such an important piece of their ball club, but the Cardinals weathered the storm. They played pretty well without Molina. And there is that opposite field approach. Holiday scores. Peralta to third. Ball gets past Rizzo. Now Molina takes off for second, and he'll get it. So it's two to nothing. Single RBI. That should be an error on Rizzo, allowing Molina to move up to second base. I think they gave it to Soler. Mm. That's that's on Anthony and Anthony would tell you it's on him. Still second and third with no outs. Adams. And a foul strike. Swing and a miss. He needs a strikeout here. 0 and 2 on Adams. We've said this more than once. This is the kind of night you don't want to let the Cardinals run away and hide here with Adam Wainwright on the mound. You already have two, and there is strike three. Castillo will fire to first, and the other runners holding. The one away now, John Jay. As good as John Jay has been, you might be tempted to put him on here, even though he's a left handed hitter. 370 against left handed pitching coming in to this ball game. Robbed of extra bases by Ryan Kalish in the last inning. And he just, with a half swing, pokes one out of the left center. The Cardinals are going to get a couple. Jay on his way to second. He'll get the bag on the throat of the plate. It's 4 nothing. A good job of hitting by the Cardinals in this inning. It's some sloppy defensive play by the Cubs. 
And look at that ball. It just, just blocks it out there in the shallow left field. First four reached, and all have scored here in this fourth inning. Ball probably should have been cut. I don't know if there's lack of communication or just awareness. Now, Ricky's got, you know, the whole infield on the mound. He may be talking to everybody, not just the pitcher and the catcher. Stay tuned. The seventh inning stretch coming up brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. But Tom O'Reilly, he uh, he won uh, won the right to sing the stretch at the Brooks and Ivy uh, Gala earlier this year. Yeah. Looking forward to having Tom in the booth tonight. Wonder if he'll sing it with an Irish brogue. Stop the bleeding here. Already four in. Cosma takes a strike. Yeah, and, and it just seems like that's that's been the nature of this season for Travis. So the innings have unraveled on him in a hurry. Stuff was really crisp tonight, and that's a misfortune. Some soft hits here in this inning. First two though were you know bad pitches. Hanging change up to Gritchick. The ball of Holiday was up. Five hits, an error. And the one. Now nothing in two to Cosma. Yeah, and I'm not saying it was you know the play to, to put Jay on there, just you know based on what he's done against left-handed pitching this year and set up the double play with Cosma. But you know, generally I'm not a big fan of the intentional walk uh, this early in the ball game. That's my point is that it would have been understandable had Ricky done it. Don't foul into the seats off of first. Let's see, nobody on base against Travis this year. Batting average 259. Runners on 294, runners in scoring position 292. Well, he's going to end up, you know, last year about 25 to 27 more innings than this year, but he's given up. About 20 more runs might end up being 25 more runs. Maybe 30 more hits this year than last year and again all those fewer innings so. Little number down the first baseline what will pick it up and tag Cosma. Jay to third two outs. And it's Wainwright. Another pitcher on the mound. This is not an out, but Wood is a cat. Got on it in a hurry. Strike call. Drive percentage up a little bit. Pitches per plate appearance up a little bit. Strike percentage down from last year. 
lot of it's subtle, but you add it all up. And you get the year he's had. An ERA of nearly five. And a lot of times you can see a, you know, a pitcher at a certain age going to decline because of the stuff just isn't the same. But that really isn't the case. The stuff is pretty much the same this year as last. It's just the execution of those pitches. Two strikes to the pitcher. He struck him out looking to end the inning. He's punched out seven, but he just gave up four. Welcome to Chief Master Sergeant Smith, the Cubs and Bank of America. Thank you for your service, sacrifice, and dedication. Welcome back. That's Chief Master Sergeant Charles Smith, 27 years of service with the United States Air Force. He has completed successful deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, Africa, and Europe. He is currently the senior enlisted advisor for the Air Force Weather Agency. Congratulations and welcome. Chief Master Sergeant Smith. There's a birthday. Turning five. Yeah. Man, big. That whole one hand covered now. Five spot. Players are down there bundled up with heaters. This little dude's rocking his shorts. <laughs> Four runs for the Cardinals. Uh, one unearned in the top of this inning. Cubs have run a pretty good gauntlet of uh, quality starting pitching here lately. Cueto, Granke, Kershaw, now Wainwright. On the last few days. And they performed well. Beat Cueto. Got Kershaw out after five. Same with Granke. But Wainwright appears to have his A game here tonight. Was not the case with Granky uh, nor with uh, Kershaw. They both were off their game a little bit. It's a major league pop up. Read a promo before it comes down. Ooh, let's try. 
Cubs baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Anthony Rizzo digs in second in the NL and homers with 31 six behind John Carlos Stanton whose season came to a premature end. Fifth Cubs left handed hitter to hit the 31 homers in a season the last to do it Henry Rodriguez oh Henry at 31 in 1998. Billy Williams hit at least 31 four different times. Bill Nicholson 1944 and Rick Monday who was here this weekend with the Dodgers he. Turned the trick in 1976 the club record. For home runs by a lefty Billy hit 42 in 1970. Not saying Anthony's going to surpass it, but I would give him a fighting chance. Assuming he's with the Cubs for many years to come, I think he could get to 40. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And you know what? Before this year, I wasn't sure. I kind of saw him as a 25 to 30 guy, but he has already surpassed that. Wainwright's 2 2. Fair ball. Actually fielded in foul territory behind the bag. Wainwright over to cover. Right now is a great time to plan for your 2015 Cubs spring training experience. Go to Cubs.com slash Mesa to place a deposit on season tickets and secure the best seats available. Individual spring training tickets go on sale in January, but Make sure you visit Cubs.com slash Mesa for the latest updates. Solaire with two outs takes a curve at 73 for a strike. We talk so much about fastball command with with Wainwright. It's it's that command of his breaking ball that makes him so tough. And make it a little bigger and loopier and drop it in for a call strike then tighten it up and get you to swing and miss when he bounces on home plate. Round ball foul. Opener decided to throw first and ask questions later which is. Smart way to do it. Wait till you hear the whistle. I mentioned Holiday with that homer here on uh, July 27th. The Cardinals a one nothing win. Wainwright with seven shutout that particular afternoon. Oh. Out of whack with his wind up there. He's seven and one in this ballpark in his career. Yeah, he's been better here than he has in St. Louis against the Cubs. Kind of strange. And he freezes Solaire to end the inning. He's cruising along now with a big lead.
MLB.com at bat. The number one live app, or app rather, for live baseball. It's a live app, too. Enjoy live look-ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts. See, it's live. The MLB.tv game of the day and more. Get it bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or go to MLB.com. Guess what? We're live at Wrigley Field. It's alive. We are live. Matt Carpenter, who doesn't strike out very often, has done so twice already tonight. No batting gloves, but he likes to step out. Get ready to work. Here we go. Talking with some scouts in the dining room earlier tonight. We we're discussing this whole pace of play issue in baseball. One Ooh. suggestion that the uh, hitters not be allowed to step out of the box. These guys are all in here advancing, looking at the Cardinals, Pirate Scouts, Dodgers Scouts, preparing for potential postseason matchup. Uh, limiting the walk up music for five or ten seconds instead of 30. I don't know how long they play it for, but apparently, guys kind of wait for their music. I think it's a combination of, of a bunch of different things. I think limiting visits to the mound. I think you should get one per inning, regardless of how many pitchers you use, without taking a pitcher out. And I think the penalty for some of these things, JD. My idea is, you got to have one foot in the box if you're a hitter, unless you broke your bat or you have an injury. You need to go talk to your third base coach. You can do it, but it's an automatic strike. Or maybe you're, you're limited to a couple of offensive timeouts a night. If you forgot the signs, tough. Yeah, maybe guys would learn, learn the signs. Them, yeah. But well, in terms of this committee that's been formed, John Sherrill to the Braves is going to uh, be the uh, chairman. Uh, Tony Clark. Uh, Head of the Players Association, former player, is, is on that committee. So, you know, anything that is uh, that punishes the players is, is going to be a tough sell to the Players Association, like adding balls and strikes or things of that nature, because that's going to affect performance. And if it's a team thing, you know, if, if, the, if the, the manager wants to go to the mound and say that. He'd already been to the mound once, but he could do it. You know, in your scenario where it's going to cost you mm -hmm. a ball, I have a hard time seeing the Players Association buying sure. into that kind of a format. It's, an inter it's interesting, though, and hopefully, you know, they they kind of spitball like this and throw a lot of things out there. And right, you know, if they're serious about it, you got to legislate it have to have consequences right. as opposed to making suggestions. Yeah, and the one story I read, uh, the commissioner Richick in the air, and Kalish is going to have room right in front of the dirt. Carpenter tagging, and he is out at second. They got him. Mike Matheny is going to head out and may challenge it, but for now, that's a double play. Mike Carpenter not leaving the base. He thought he was safe. Or thought he was potentially safe. Kalish backed up to the warning track. It's off a pretty good one hop throw here to Baez. And I think he missed him the first time. If he missed him, then he's safe. Yeah. This is where the ball beat him. It looked like the pet tag was not applied till then. My best guess. Yeah, it's slightly incriminating when we have to go to the tag again. <laughs> yeah. You do it the second time. You know, he swipes uh, there, and I think he missed him. But is it conclusive he missed him? I don't him? know, right. And it's... you can't necessarily say he missed him just because he tagged him again. So, right. they challenged. 
So this, anyway, this uh, is another one, JD. I don't think Matheny should have to come out. I think he should just hold a flag up. Yeah, that speeding this up would be good yes. too. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it has to, but we don't have the long on field arguments for the most part now, which is a good byproduct of, of replay. But the story, anyway, the story I read on this uh, committee that Commissioner Selig has put together, and the Commissioner Elect Manford is also part of it. Um, it, it, it used the word uh, recommendations will come out of this committee. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that means. I guess it doesn't mean anything, but I want, you know, I'm with you. I think we need rule changes, not just recommendations as in we would prefer if you do this, that and the other thing. I think there has to be here's a, here's a new rule that we're going to use to try to increase the pace of play in Major League Baseball. And by the way, I don't think the game itself is boring. I don't, and I think some people worry, and rightly so, that somehow we're going to legislate more offense. That to me is not the issue. What I think they need to eliminate is those moments of nothing happening. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't, don't want to. Too yeah. much downtime. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we are, you know, baseball tends to run in cycles, and we are in a period of, of all, you know, Really good pitching right now, and, and really effective usage, bullpen usage of all these power arms. So you, you know, late in games, uh, you see a slew of strikeouts, and sometimes those hard throwers are a little wild. So you mix in a few walks, and the ball is not being put in play, and that can become a little boring. Uh, I, but I don't know that that's fixable, other than getting the pitchers to work more quickly and keeping the batters in the batter's box. So at least those strikeouts and walks happen a little more quickly than they currently do. It's funny you say that the game goes in cycles. I feel like this is the baseball version of the climate change debate. <laughs> is this just a cycle or are things fundamentally yeah. changing? We don't know. Well, uh, the Dodgers series that just completed, we did not. Go to extra innings in any of those games. All right. And the game times were as follows 353, 331, 344, 345. There was a lot of run scoring. We know that. But there were a ton of uh, pitching changes and mound visits, mm -hmm. stepping in, stepping out. Well, the expanded rosters in September. Give the managers so much flexibility to make changes too that that adds to it. Well, they're taking a good long look at this yeah, one in New York. And understandably, you know, given the looks we had, it was tough to tell. Okay, he's called safe, so it is overruled. Successful challenge by Mike Matheny. I, I got another one for you. How about replay? We say each manager gets one challenge, period, per game. Well, you get one shot at some egregious bad call. That would maybe limit some of the ticky tack stuff we see in the second or third inning. Off the end of the bat, and it's going to drop. And Carpenter will score. So you take a great challenge, right, by yep. Mike Matheny. Mm -hmm. Five, his birthday. nothing. He's on a birthday roll. Second hit of the night for a holiday. In other words, J.D., if the goal was to get rid of, you know, the egregiously bad call and not look at every single play, mm -hmm. we've had games, I think we've had three or four Maybe challenges, and once you get past the uh, sixth inning, you can make suggestions. Maybe it's just one per team per game. That's it. I would choose uh, wisely. I, I would. I would vote yes for that proposal. Mm -hmm. It's just a little something. It's not going to yeah, cure all the issues, but there's a but coming, and the, and the but is this: is that now we've kind of the language around replay now has become get it right you know, as long as we get it right so that seems to be the emphasis now 
from MLB. So I don't think they're going to back away from it. But I agree with you. I think it's worth it. You know, I was stunned at how many of these the, the little bang bang calls we've seen at first base that have been replayed uh, back in spring training when we had this conversation. I thought that play would almost never be challenged, but it's, it's challenged, challenged all the time. Or if it's not challenged, the manager comes, runs all the way from the dugout to first base, turns around, looks into his dugout, and then says, "Okay, I'm good." Yeah. And then that, you, you waste 30 seconds there of just nothing. So, uh, by the way, uh, is this the giveaway tonight? It's a free to lays night tonight. night. So we have a classic mix. As Peralta takes ball four. There you go. Got the classic. Got the Doritos, nacho cheese. Got the Cool Ranch. We got the Cheetos Crunchy, Sun Chips original. I like those. And the original corn chips. Do you have a favorite? I, I'm a basic, uh, basic. I like classic. Uh, too. Yeah, basic potato chip. Right. Sounds good. Twenty bad, twenty singles. Really? Yeah. We could throw these to some fans later on. Oh, we could. We could do the Milo thing in the seventh. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Ooh, it's easy opening bag. I like that. Hey, you want the sun chips? I won't throw those out. No, I'll throw them. This is nice Doritos. Maybe Tim McCarver wants one. Yeah. Next door. We just, but the people aren't ready down there. We're just going to bomb them. I don't want to hit anybody. There's Molina. Could beat us up down there. Strike called. Look. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. He did it. The Mike guy in the Clay. blue. Hey, the Mike. guy in the light blue did Here, it. You want it? Here you go, Mike. You don't need they, they don't need you right now. Nothing's happening. There you go. Oh! There you go. Not close. Right there. It's it just fell out of the sky. It's raining sun chips. Yes, you should eat it. Here. You want one too? Here you go. I'll give it for both of you. There you go. There you go. Enjoy it. I like making people happy. It's <laughs> a good bit. Tap. Foul. Blake Parker is up in the Cubs bullpen. Ooh, Adam checks in on Twitter. How about this? Make the player instantly request the challenge on the spot. <laughs> you want mass chaos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't think you can ask players to <laughs> make those decisions. We've already had to make decisions. And uh, they always think they're right. Yeah. Now and then Molina will ambush you and look to turn on one, but typically he's alley to alley. On his hands that time. The uh, Pirates, who uh, are two and a half games behind the Cardinals in the standings, have a one to nothing lead over Atlanta. The bottom, uh, they're in the bottom of the eighth in Atlanta. The Pirate run coming on an Andrew McCutcheon home run, his 24th. It seems like the Pirates. Play one to nothing game every day lately.
Three two runners go. They'll stay out of the double play. As Baez throws to first to get Molina. Let's step aside my friends and see what's coming up on WGN. Len and JD and our WGN crew, Cardinals and Cubs here at Wrigley Field. Our good friends, the Sun Chips. Second and third for Matt Adams. Big, big man. You know, more of a line drive hitter than pure slugger, but I think the, the home run numbers will continue to increase. The longer he's in the league, the more he's going to get an understanding of how they're trying to pitch him. Starts to use that lower body a little bit more, too. He's going to start to lift the ball. I'm back. We've ruined our argument for quickening the pace of game. Everybody on uh, Twitter loves the uh, the fact we've been throwing Doritos all over the place. Adams is going to knock in two, and this may knock Travis Wood out of the ball game. Long single, seven to nothing. Boy, well, so uh, good first time through the order, but since then the Cardinals have had his number. Another disappointing night for Travis Wood and what has been a very disappointing season. Really good last time out. Great start to his game here tonight. Thought maybe he's going to be able to finish with two real solid starts. But the Cardinals have put a touchdown and kicked the extra point. We will. Face J and ball one. Strike three to end the inning. They add three to their lead. Who wants chips? Chips. We got classic. Chips. Look out. Ooh. Chips. Chips for sale. Chips.
Cardinals trying to get their magic number down to four if not three depending on the Pirates tonight. We're leading at Atlanta one nothing in the night. Here's Val Buena. Chip toss is kind of fun. Yeah. We've got more to unleash a little later. <laughs> we'll give everybody a little break. We're going to start throwing out cans of French onion dip. Two and oh, Wainwright looking for win number 20. Yeah, the other day uh, in the Kershaw game, Dodger scored six in the first. And uh, we got a note from Rob Nagger that Kershaw was, what, 65 and 0 when given a four run lead? Yep. And so, you know, same kind of thing applies to, to Wayne right here. The chances right. coming back in this one are almost nil. Are you calling out Rob Nagger? Yeah, that's it. I'm just throwing that out there to see if somebody else wants to do research for us. Second base runner tonight. Uh, Buena lead off walk. Of course, that doesn't mean that those teams haven't lost games that that you know because typically if you're up four or five runs and you start to give it up, you come out of the game and you're not the pitcher of record. Right. So there's no way Adam Wainwright is going to be a losing pitcher tonight. Doesn't mean that if the Cubs chip away against him and then get into the bullpen, they could ultimately win the game. You're saying sometimes statistics don't tell the whole story? Sometimes. Well, I always like the one, you know, team leading after eight is 93 and two, whatever. It's like, yeah, well, they're supposed to be. Yeah, even the bad teams. Even bad teams are, yeah. win most of yeah. their yeah. games when they're ahead after eight. Well, uh, let's see. The Cubs are 69 and 87, so they're 18 games under 500. When they lead entering the ninth, they're 60 and two. When they're down going into the ninth, they're 0 and 77. The Cardinals probably going to win this division. They're 0 and 58 when they trail after eight, and they're 77 and three with the lead after eight. Yeah. So typically, most clubs are very good at closing people out from the seventh inning on. Seventh inning, oftentimes, it becomes a critical inning in a ball game. Win the seventh, win the game. Three and one here it is on Castillo and he muscles one out into center but it's going to fly all the way out to Jay who makes the catch. One away. Well remember we were in St. Louis Cubs won the first two games and Soler had the two homer performance and just kind of felt like they they noticed in the in the Cardinal dugout St. Louis came back to. Win the final two games of that series. I think teams who who see Soler and Alcantara and, and Baez for the first time they they see the talent. Yeah, there's a lot of people around the game talking about these young players. And I thought you hit it right on the head when we were in St. Louis. Executives, they know the names and probably have scouted a lot of these guys on other teams and in other organizations. But Major League players, by and large, live in their own world. So they've heard the name. 
But when we were in St. Louis, I remember talking to A.J. Pruszynski. He goes, yeah, I'm curious to see Baez. And so I've been hearing about these mm -hmm, guys. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't seen them until they actually see them in a big league uniform. They don't really have an opinion. And veteran players tend to be skeptical of young players. Okay, I've heard good things about you. Now prove it. Show me what you got. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing the ball Soler hit. 460 feet or whatever it was, <laughs> the second that, homer that that's, night. That's pretty that good got proof. everybody's attention. Yeah, there's, some, there's pretty good evidence right there. He's reliving that moment. Struck him out. For six for Wainwright. Yep. Every now and then he'll take a shot upstairs. Typically he works the bottom of the strike zone. A lot of good pitchers. The key is to stay out of that, that middle zone, that happy zone, mid thigh. You know, you go down around the knees or up about letter high. So here's a question for you. So you got Adam Wainwright on the mound tonight. Tonight you had Johnny Cueto last week, even though he struggled, and Clayton Kershaw was not at his best on Friday. But did you, as a young pitcher especially, and I'm thinking of a guy like Kyle Hendricks, are you, are you really paying attention? I mean, really watching what a guy does when you see him up close and personal, just to. to Gather any sort of information you can from the other side. Um, or do you just watch? You just, yeah, I, I'm mostly just watched. Um, I think there are other guys that, you know, if you see a, a pitcher has a similar game plan as you do, same kind of stuff, you might be able to pick up some ideas. Um, I think you know you're so kind of locked in with what you do, what your approach is to try to get hitters out. It's hard to, to watch another guy. Could have been strike three. Instead, it's ball one. Was hit in the air out into left center. Long run, John Jay, and he's got it to end the inning. All Cardinals tonight, seven to nothing.
Cardinals tonight. Seven zip, eight hits to one. And Holiday two out of three. Wainwright doing his thing. Rizzo with a lone hit for the Cubs tonight. And Travis Wood's season comes to an end. Allowing six earned runs, seven runs total in five innings of work. Start something special with great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or visit your local Honda dealer. And here comes Blake Parker. 17th big league appearance this year. One and one with a 568. Fastball, curveball, split finger pitch. In his first offering to Pete Cosma misses the outside corner on a fastball. So one Arkansan yields to another Arkansan. Arkansasian. <laughs> it could be. Now, I used to be called a Michigander, but I believe they've changed it to Michiganian. Really? Yes. And who's they? You know, you know them. You know who they <laughs> are. They say. Same guys that say you, you, you can't steal with a big lead. Yes. I kind of like Michigander. I do too. Line shot. Ryan Kalish makes a catch for the out. There's the unwritten rule book. Ironically titled unwritten. And so and there's, there's no rules in there so you can just make them up. So the people from the great state of Illinois are Illinoisans. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that what you've heard? I think so. Yeah. Illinoisans. Well the Illini, Illini. I guess you could use. So if you have a thought you could tweet us. And we'll throw a bag of Doritos at your Twitter handle. You can kind of have this just kind of throw it at yeah. your at your computer. Illinoisans. Swing and a miss on a curveball two away. So the uh, we mentioned earlier about Mike Matheny heading to the postseason for the uh, third time. All three years he's been a manager. There's only been a handful of guys to do that. Huey Jennings, back in 1907-09 with the Detroit. Ralph Halk with the Yankees in the early 60s. Larry Durker, also celebrating a birthday today. 97 through 99 with the Astros and Ron Gardenhire with the Twins, 2002 to four. Larry Durker, that's a good one. Strike called. Uh, 
Carpenter hasn't put it in play yet. A couple of strikeouts in a walk. Advance the second on a deep fly, ruled safe after a replay challenge. Led to a three run inning. He's got pretty good action on that curveball tonight. Well, the, the, the final start of uh, Travis Woods' season has been a problem the last two years. Check the actual number last year, but wasn't he under three and he ended up at 311? He got that last inning. And in the deep right center, Solaire will not get it. One hops a wall. Carpenter's got a double. So last year, Travis Wood threw one inning in his final start, and then he was pulled, and it was in St. Louis. Gave up three runs in that first inning, and his final ERA went from 298 to 311. Tonight, assuming this is it for him this season, he went from 486 to 503. That hurts. Yeah, he had been up above five and got it down below with that last outing. Among qualifiers, he had the highest ERA. In the National League prior to tonight's start. It'd be a year he'd rather forget. Learn from it and move on. Weird night tonight. He had eight strikeouts. Good action on his pitches. Been in on Gritchick. That ball took off on Parker. Now two and one. The Indians beat the Royals 4 3 in that suspended game uh, in Kansas City. They finished it in Cleveland earlier today. So a 10 inning ball game. And the Indians got the win 4 3 the final uh, in the nightcap, Kansas City with a 2 0 lead. In the top of the ninth. So the Indians not done yet, but really need to come back in the bottom of the ninth. Rizzo into the Cardinal bullpen, and he's got it, and that'll end the inning. Two out double, no runs, seven zip, St. Louis.
Beautiful Wrigley Field, including tonight, just three more home games in 2014. Great shot at the corner. Waveland and Sheffield. The entrance of the Bud Light Bleachers. Logan Watkins will hit for Parker. Strike one called. Bounce past Wainwright, but behind second, it's Peralta. Low throw dug out by Adams for the out. We've seen a whole lot of Carlos Villanueva lately. It looks like he'll be next. Limited to two base runners so far tonight. Two out double by Rizzo in the first. And the leadoff walk of Albuena in the fifth. Pirates a one nothing winner at Atlanta. So they clinch a playoff spot. Uh, with a magic number of two. So barring a total collapse they're in. Coughlin. Not happy with himself as he pops it up. And we should note when you when you get your magic number down to one. You have clinched. Essentially a tie. Or mm -hmm. something. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Pirates magic number is not that but it's as close to that as you can get. Yeah, this this uh, fuzzy playoff picture is starting to clear up a little bit here. It looks like Pirates and the Giants will play in the wild card game. Sight to be determined. Those teams were dead even coming into play tonight. Nationals two games better than the Dodgers two and a half games better than the Dodgers for the best overall record in the National League. So it looks like they would host the winner of the play in game. And the Cardinals will play the Dodgers in the first round. Starting in L.A. if things don't change. And because of just a two game. A difference. Things could change. Things could. Yeah. There's an incentive for the Cardinals to keep pressing even after they clinch the division. One and two on Baez. And he got him on the curve to end the inning.
Adams fan cam. The Bobby Fuller Four. Uh, band, of course, did uh, I Fought the Law. That's Letter Dance, the Bobby Fuller Four. 7 nothing, St. Louis. Cardinals bat in the seventh. Guess who started that band? Bobby Fuller. Yep. You're on it. Formed in El Paso, Texas in 1962. Were there four of them? I don't know. I would assume there were four at one point. Carlos Villanueva. Like Parker, one scoreless. A lot of hit. No walks, one strikeout. Carlos, five and seven, 464. Works for the 42nd time. Holiday. A little perplexed by that call, but it looked like a good pitch. Royals beat the Indians 2 0 in the regularly scheduled game tonight. Lined out foul. Guy hit some screaming line drives. One of the stronger humanoids in the game. Two two is outside on a fastball. Cubs typically try to pitch him hard in. Guys with a little giddy up on their fastball or some running action in on the hands. Carlos doesn't have that plus velocity, so he's got to go about it a little bit differently. Swing and a miss, strike three. Thanks to the Roost Carolina Kitchen. Oh man, look at those biscuits. Chicken just to die for. Nice going, JD. Good stuff, wasn't it? Yes. There's Skip, but he's happy. Mark Brady, Mark Brady, Bob Borwald on his fantasy team. Hi, Scott. Brady's been yeah, I'm full. Bragging about that chicken, raving about it all year. Peach cobbler too for dessert. Oh my. Peralta hit it hard, but right to Alcantara. <laughs> Two outs here in the seventh, and it's Yadier Molina, one for three, with an RBI and a run. Here's the pitch. Change them up and a strike call. That's the thing about Carlos. Uh, he, he can go through you know, stretches of limited activity and still have really good command of his pitches. It's 
expect if you were to ask Chris Bazio, say, you know, give me your top two guys who, when throwing in the bullpen, are going to hit the catcher's mitt the highest percentage of the time, the answer would be being away than Hendricks. Of course, Arietta, the way he's been going along. Yeah. You know, it's funny, we've been talking about Cueto and Kershaw and Granke and, and Wainwright, uh, but the best game pitched so far is Arietta. Yep. And that game was not an outlier. I mean, that's who he has become. Ground ball to short. Baez scoops. And it's time now for the seventh inning stretch, and it's brought to you by Budweiser. Tonight's guest conductors for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Brinks and Ivy winners, Tom O'Reilly and Dan Kirk. All right, Cup fans, let me hear you. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack. I don't care if I ever get back, so just root, root, root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame, for it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Let's get one. Who wants them? <laughs> Paula likes the Cheetos. All right, let me see if I can get one to Coomer. <laughs> can't get it over there. No one's going down to the lower deck. <laughs> what Coomer should use this vacuum hose there? It looks like something out of a Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Dan <McLaughlin>. <laughs> 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 oh, I guess we could just walk it over there, right? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. Uh, two years ago, a few years ago, we were playing the Rockies back in Houston, and. Uh, Firing out some peanuts, and I, I tried to throw an angle shot like that, and it hit the, the booth next to us. It was Dan O'Dowd, the general manager for the <laughs> for the Rockies, and the, the the peanuts just exploded all over his booth. I think it spilled his drink. And they had lost like <laughs> seven in a row. <laughs> it was just felt so bad. Two and two on Rizzo. I'm done throwing them for tonight. You need to ice down your shoulder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's a pitch by Wainwright. 
Well, a jam shot pop up and Cosmo makes a catch. He has not missed his spot very often tonight. He being Adam Wainwright. He's on quite a roll. Has been his pitch. He's got a 182 road ERA this year. He's been better on the road than at home. Doing perhaps his best work of the season here down the stretch. That's really been the key to the Cardinals. It's not like they're tearing the cover off the ball. Been fairly mediocre. Middle of the pack offensive club all year long. Pitching's leading the way here in September. They got a 256 team ERA this month, third best in the league, trailing uh, only the Pirates and the Nationals. Two on Solaire. And another strikeout. Eight and counting for Adam Wainwright against just one walk. He's only given up two base runners all night. The double to Rizzo in the first, the Valbuena walk in the fifth. Yeah, a lot of times you'll hear guys uh, say, well, you know, I played a little bit of pro ball, but I didn't make it very far. Or I played high school ball, but I didn't play college ball. And then and, and, uh, kind of the, the tagline will be because I couldn't hit the curveball. Well, big leaguers have a hard time hitting the curveball, too. Trouble with the curve, right? Yeah. Having a hard time recognizing it out of the hand of Wainwright. Some guys kind of loop it up there and has a little hump, and you can see it out of their hand and, and read breaking ball early. That's not the case with Wainwright. Not tonight. That's a snapdragon he's featuring. One and two. As hard as you'll see him throw these days, 90 on that fastball. So the Giants and the Dodgers playing tonight. I guess Pablo Sandoval got hit by Dan Heron and then Yasiel Puig. Got hit by Jake Peavy. Not watching the game, just following some of those details on Twitter. Makes you go, hmm. Three and two on Valbuena. Can't be very far far along. Bottom of the first one nothing San Francisco. Gregor Blanco with a home run. And the top of that inning. Lined and in the center for base hit. Second hit of the night for the Cubs. Constitutes a rally right there. Uh, Boyne has been in a real good stretch here lately. His second reach. So remember the conversation we had the other day about Kershaw 
whether Don Mattingly might try to save some bullets if he's got a big lead in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, there's some scurrying now in the Cardinal bullpen. We're in the bottom of the seven. Wainwright has dominated tonight, but he's now over 100 pitches. And because of the fact we're in late September, I wonder if Mike Absolutely. Matheny should be thinking about yes, he should. seven yep. nothing, right? Yep. And there's another base hit. That will get some action going quickly. Uh, that's kind of the irony of it, though. For me, if, if, if the Cubs start to score a little bit, I, I probably still want Wayne right on the mound. He's your best option. But if he takes a 7 nothing lead, you know, gets through this inning, 7 nothing or 7-1, if I were Matheny, I would shut him down. That will end the inning. Contour grounds out. Back to back hits. No runs. Still seven zip. Budweiser, great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best selling brand. Check out our best selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Carlos Villanueva in his second inning of work. So Matt Adams swing and a miss. Deep to right. Bangs it off the wall. Solaire to second. Adams just got in, but it is fun to watch him throw. I mean, that's just pretty much an automatic double. You bang one off the wall and right. He was playing well off the line, but he still made it close. Yeah, he's got a cannon attached to his right shoulder out there. He's the kind of guy when you're pitching, you hope base runners try to take extra bases. He might get an out for you.
Yeah, there just aren't too many uh, Ellis Valentines, Jeff Francours, Vladimir Guerreros, Dave Parker's around. Fun, fun when you you see throws like that. Cespedes and Puig. Mm -hmm. But the accuracy is what really right. impresses for, for Jorge. I'd have to give him A pluses across the board. I mean, have you seen anything about his game that? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Just, no. just play, yeah. young man. Yeah. Right? Just, yeah. just do your thing. Lined into right center. He may get another chance here. Adams coming around. He's not going to make that throw. And again, a smart decision. Right, right. That's the thing. To not make that yeah. throw. The guys with big arms like to show it off. And they like to make heroic throws and they make mistakes because of it. They give up extra bases to back runners. And so far he's done a nice job of being able to read the situation. Realize when he has a play and when he doesn't have a play. I mean he gives himself a shot. He aggressively pursues that ball. Looks up realizes there's no play to be made. Keeps a double play in order. So Jay has knocked in three tonight. Line to Baez, throw to first. Not in time. Was after Jay's RBI single. Choreography. Oscar Tavares. We've long been the Cardinals' top prospect. Ball one. Two balls, no strikes. Deep to center field. Kalis on the move. Makes another terrific catch. That'll send Jay back to first. Two outs. Now, there have not been many highlights for the Cubs in this ball game, but two plays by Kalis stand out. One early, and now this one here in the top half of the eighth. Nice play. Here's Carpenter. So Wainwright Dunn seems to be in uh, really good shape for his 20th win, leading 8 0 here in the eighth.
Cardinals will maintain their two and a half game lead over the Pirates who beat the Braves one to nothing tonight. Cardinals have played one more game than the Pirates. Cardinals are off Thursday. Pirates are not. Pirates have a four game series in Atlanta. Before heading to Cincinnati to finish the season, St. Louis will move on to Phoenix for their final three. Only run in that uh, Pirate game was Andrew McCutcheon's 24th home run. So they keep playing one nothing decisions. That's what, three in a row? Yeah. yeah. And back to their Milwaukee weekend. So, so Clint Hurdle wins a manager of the year last year, and the Pirates are going back to the playoffs again. I you got to knock out the champion. Yeah, if you're the incumbent. <laughs> um, everybody no, was gunning for them this year. Yeah, but they won last year. Therefore, there are expectations that they would be good this year. So who would you? Oh, I don't know. I, mean, I think just tell me who yeah. would you? Uh, any, 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 nationally, any Matt number? Williams? Any, any? Yeah, why not? Although, you know, how about Matheny? Yeah, people around the Cardinals say this has been his best uh, job as their manager. He's had to really, really manage this year as Carpenter strikes out. Eight nothing, St. Louis. Sweet home Eight nothing St. Louis. Peter Borges, some cards moves. He's playing center. Jay moves to left. Sam Freeman, left hander. Hard throw and left hander. Two and over the 250 and 40 appearances so far. And Caesar for Kalish. Five eleven, a buck sixty-five, a wiry guy, but he throws hard. Quick arm action. Roll to Cosma. Uh, 
The road is Viscaino. Apparently we'll get the ninth. Mike Alt, ball one. Looking for his first homer since coming back from AAA Iowa. One ball, one strike. Straight change that time from Freeman. Shelby Miller, Kyle Hendricks tomorrow. On WCIU, John Lackey and Jake Arietta Wednesday. Fastball away. The pitch blowing in. What a win for the Oakland A's yesterday. In extras. On a Josh Donaldson two run homer in the 10th to beat the Phillies. And tonight. They put up a four spot in the opening inning. And lead the Angels four to one. Jeff Samarja pitching tonight for the A's. He walked him. And it's one thing about Freeman. He does issue a fair number of free passes. But the thing he's got to have some concerns with his bullpen. Trevor Rosenthal struggled with his command all year long. So, two thirds, uh, two thirds of an inning tonight for C.J. Wilson and Dunn. Two hits, four walks, four runs. He was the starting pitcher for the Angels in that game against the A's. And Marja, who has not had a whole lot of run support with the A's, gets them here tonight. Somebody wrote a story. Uh, I read the other day and said Jeff Samarja was the unluckiest man in baseball this year. Sure feels like it. Funny how we've just gotten used to uh, expanded interleague play. Arizona is at the Twins tonight, final week of the season. And if you're curious, the Diamondbacks have a 5 2 lead in the bottom of the seventh. I was wondering about that one. No, you weren't. <laughs> Derek Jeter knocked in three as the Yankees <laughs> shut out Baltimore. Five nothing on one hit. Final home series for Jeter. The Orioles clinched home field advantage. In their division series because Detroit lost to the White Sox. Two nothing the final in that one. Detroit falls to 86 and 70. Kansas City now 85 and 71. Hmm. Full count three and two. Ball four. I'll get some action going in the Cardinal bullpen. 
Uh, battery mates again. Giovanni Soto uh, knocking in two in the first inning. He's catching some margin tonight. Seth Manus. Baez takes a strike. Well located by Freeman. Change up outside. I was much more likely to get a mistake off Freeman than he was off Wainwright. Wainwright carved him up pretty good tonight. A couple of punch outs and a pop up to first base. Freeman has good stuff, but he does not have the command that Wainwright does. Peralta down to get it, and they turn to 6 4 3, and the inning comes to a very quick halt. Javier hit it hard, went into a 6 4 3. Brady, our director is Skip Ellison, Tamara Anderson, our associate producer, the executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Warwald, Christina Ballas, our studio coordinator at WGN, Paul Oscrova, our stage manager in the booth. Great work by our entire crew. Here's Matt Caesar in center after pinch hitting. And Arotis Vizcaino. Takes over on the mound. Yeah, just uh, four appearances so far for Vizcaino with the big club. So not a whole lot to digest yet. This is the uh, hard thrown right hander the Cubs got from the Braves. The uh, not pitch in 2012 13, coming back from surgeries. Started with the Yankees, then the Braves. Big cut and a miss by Randall Gritchick, Jim Tianis, Bob Albrecht, Kenny Lyles, Mike Clay. He's got a lot of potato chips in his back pocket. 
courtesy us. Bloop base hit for Gritchick. Win Griffiths. Where's Win? I win. Shout out to Mark Stencil. Every time we make some funny reference about something on the internet, he finds a picture of it. And we pop it up. Where's Joe? Hey, Pawsey. He's right behind us. He's a Marquette guy. Can't forget about Pawsey. Come on. Which is nice. He was almost literally under our nose. Frank Leone running the board and playing all this fun Van Halen music. One strike on Borges. His first at bat. He came into play center in the bottom of the eighth. Dave Grunvik in the house. Greg Gressel, Mike Aiello. Swing and a miss. 95 with some life from Viscaino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you love this arm. Danielle Denning making sure the score and the base runners, the count. The outs are all accurate on your TV screen. That bounced way out in front of home plate. That one got away from Viscaino, Scott Jones, Steve Casey, John Eckert, finding all those great replays. One and two. Roberto Rios punching all the buttons. <laughs> Take whatever that one. Kurt Bagby video. Mike Castle with NEP. Victor Navarro. Danny Meager, Danny Mahar. I knew it was Mahar. Someone said Meager. I should have known better. Fly ball center. It's Caesar for the out. Stay classy, San Diego. This is Daniel Descalzo. Thanks, Thank JD. us. Thanks, Len. I mentioned Paula. There's Paula. Bob and Paula. There's Bob and Paula. Here, Paula. We found her. She's hiding. Here. Hey, Paula. Here. Some potato <laughs> chips. Bob, there you go. You got two bags left. <laughs> there goes my drive home Oh, treat. wait, I've got crunchy Cheetos. I think Paula wanted those. Yes. Hey, JD. It's not my bag. <laughs> okay. You were left holding the bag. <laughs> 2 and 0 to Descalzo. Two old pitch, three and zero. Oh. As we envision this power bullpen in the future, you definitely have to think about this guy being in mm -hmm. the middle yep. of it. Yeah, well, and and this, you know, the more high ceiling arms you can add to the mix, the more flexibility it gives you. You know, as you try to sort it all out. You know, maybe you want to try to move one of these. Current guys into the rotation. If this proves himself to be healthy and can throw enough strikes, he can move into one of those late inning relief roles. As he came up through the 
Yankees and then Brave Systems. He was primarily a starting pitcher. He walked him. Cruz. I also want to thank Greg Easterly, our president general manager, WGN, and Doug Stanton, who uh, moved on to other opportunities a couple of months ago, but we want to acknowledge Doug's efforts. Cruz hitting for Molina. One and one. One one. Popped him up. Field fly in effect. Rizzo the catch. Here's Adams with two outs. One bit of advice for baseball fans out there as we do get into October don't believe any pundits who tell you they, they know what's going to happen because they don't and it's their job to try to tell you. <laughs> but nobody yeah, really knows. No way. Once you get into the postseason. That's why I never bought into that. Well. Broken bat roller. Oh, oh, oh. Nice job by Baez. And the pick at the other end. That was a tricky play for Javier Baez, but he made it. Proper room. Hey, food fight. Looking for their 22nd shutout of the year. 
leading 8 0. And it'll be veteran left hander Randy Choate against Anthony Rizzo to start this bottom of the night. Some other changes for the Cardinals. The Scalzo stays in and plays second. Cosma goes over to short. And Tony Cruz catching. So the young, hard throwing left hander Freeman replaced by the veteran crafty left hander Choate. Is anything but hard throwing his fastball right around 84 85 miles an hour. Sinkers and sliders. His job is just to neutralize dangerous left handed hitters. So anyway, the point I was trying to make there. Yes. Uh, towards the end of that previous inning was. You know the whole notion about that it's going to be a terrible disappointment if this you know team X doesn't win the World Series. They're built to win it all. Well, it's, always, it's a disappointment for everybody when their season ends, unless, except for the team that's holding the trophy. Um, and the notion that you cannot, you know, it wouldn't be a good season because you didn't win the World Series. I don't care how talented, how much payroll you have. You get through the long slog of a season. You win a division. You've accomplished something. Yep. Everybody's beatable in the postseason. It was pointed out, and I have to find who made that uh, point. Twitter. And you give credit where credit is due. There's a pretty decent chance there will not be a 100 loss team. There may not be a 100 win team. In all of baseball this year, we see more teams kind of scrunched in the middle than before. The liner will be caught by Borges, and I, you know, the best team we've seen this year in person was probably the Blue Jays, but they're not going to make it. That three game series was a sweep in Toronto. But, and then, you know, the Cubs swept Baltimore. They're 31 over 500. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we've seen a, a team you'd go, they don't have any holes. I think every team has something you can point to to go, well, that, that's maybe a soft spot. Uh, I'm with you on the Nationals probably being not airtight, but pretty darn good. Going into postseason action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah if the Dodgers hit like they did this oh weekend, goodness. nobody yeah. will beat them. Yeah. You know? But they probably won't because they'll face the really good pitching and for the rotation yeah. guys. I mean, think about this weekend. They had Kemp going, they had Gonzalez going, they had Puig just out of his mind. Oh, yeah. Like Carl, Carl Crawford's lady, hitting four something in September. Uribe was hitting 380 something in September. B. Gordon. That long hitting streak. Solaire against the shift into center. They had three guys on the other side of second. So he is on for the first time. Solaire was making a concerted effort to go the other way there. There was a, a baseball prospectus piece written year, a few years ago, roughly titled, Why Doesn't Billy Bean's Thing Work in the Postseason? And it, it kind of tried to identify what thing, what, what, what kinds of things do you want uh, for a postseason run? And I don't know if we've Really got to the point where you can say you've built a playoff roster. Uh, I think everybody generally should be able to pitch a little bit. Yeah, you know, strong back into the bullpen, man. You don't want to go into the postseason not feeling good about your eighth and ninth innings. Yeah, and I think that's a, a, a concern the Dodgers have. I think that's a concern this club here has. The guys in the red hats.
That could be it. 4-6-3 to end the game. So the Cardinals shut out the Cubs tonight, and they get their magic number down to four to clinch the National League Central. Final score from Wrigley Field tonight as Adam Wainwright gets number 20. The Cardinals eight, the Cubs nothing.